Hello, my name is Linnea from Linnea Loves Music, and today we're going to be talking about how to teach music online through the quarantine. There are many different types of services that you can use for teaching music online. For instance, Skype, uh, Google Hangouts, FaceTime, Zoom. What I'm going to be specifically talking about is about Google Hangouts. One of the things that I really love to do with Google Hangouts is to set up appointments. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So you're going to be in your Google Calendar here. And let's say you have a student, we'll call them Beth, um, and she has a piano lesson going from, let's say, 11 to 11.30. I can set up an appointment for her to have her lesson. And then if I click on more options here, I can add different things like I could add in an uh, email address at gmail.com, let's say, and I could add a conferencing option. So I could add Hangouts. And the great thing about that is that it'll send an email notification to your students and they'll be able to just click on join the Hangout. And I will also show how that's also beneficial too for you because it's also really easy for you to find everybody's email really quickly in a concise place. So you can also set it to repeat. So let's say we're setting it to repeat weekly at this time. And I can do different things, like I could change different colors or different things like that. But let's say for my piano students, for my voice student. And then you can save that and click save. Now, normally I would want to send an email notification to Beth at gmail.com, but being that I don't know if there's actually a Beth at gmail.com. Now. It's a pretend email. We're just going to say don't send right now just so somebody doesn't get some weird um, notification. And the great thing is, is let's say at Thursday at 11 a.m. that time comes, that appointment time comes, and I could have like a whole list of people here. All I have to do is let's say I have a group of like 30 different appointments or something. All I have to do is cl click on best appointment here. There we go. That's a little better. And then I'm going to click join hangout. And then as soon as I click on join hangout, it's going to bring up this hangout window and I'll be able to join Beth in her hangout. Um, if Beth is not here yet, I could also request that she joins and I could invite someone and I could type in her email right here. But of course, I don't know if there actually is a Beth at gmail.com, probably is. So I don't wanna creepishly send it to her, but I could send that to her and then immediately I would start my video conferencing with her, which is a really helpful tool because when you have so many different appointments, you wanna keep it really straight in your head as to, who's going next, what is their email, and that's a really good way to keep everything nice and concise so you very easily can find your next client's lesson time. Another really important thing to be able to have during your lesson is to be able to take notes for your student in their lesson. And I find this is really important because not only does it hold you accountable so that you remember, so you have record of what you're supposed to hold your student accountable for, but then you also end up having an opportunity to be able to make sure the student remembers and also the parent, so everybody's all involved in on the conversation. Being that we're already using Gmail to do all these different functions, I figure a real great way is just continue using that same platform there. So I like to make a Google document, scroll down, make a Google document. And in here, I can click on get a blank document started right here. And while Beth is having her lesson, I can write in here so I can start a document uh, Beth's piano lesson. Oh, that is horrible spelling, Beth's piano lesson. And I can best piano lesson and then I could go over 
here and let's say whenever it's March 30th. And then here I could have her technique and I could even set up um, metronome speeds that I want her to work on. And then you can also put her different songs here, list them. And I can type all sorts of different um, comments about that. Work on dynamics. And I can also put uh, her theory assignment for that week. So page 70 to 71. So this is a real great way to keep track of what your students need to work on from week to week. Another thing that I do here then is then I would go into the share. First I'll save that name, yes, Beth's Piano Lesson. And then I'm going to share it with, let's say Beth, gmail.com. Sorry, Beth at gmail.com. <laughs> you actually do in fact exist. <laughs> I'm not going to actually send it to you. But what I usually like to do here is I actually like to not do the can edit comment. I usually like to do the can comment or can view um, permission. So you just put in their e email and you can put their parents' email and their email so everybody can see the document. And I usually like to pick either can comment or can view. The reason why I like to do that is accidents can just happen where people can accidentally delete something or accidentally change something. So I think with a can comment permission, it allows the student to be able to say, you know, I had a really hard time with this song. Uh, I spend a little bit more time with this in today's lesson or whatever it is. And then when I pull up their lesson notes for the next week, I can know that that is something that they really want to work on. So it gives them an opportunity to add that information. So normally I would just send this to Beth, but I'm going to cancel because it is an imaginary email. I also wanted to go through some options of books that I really love to use when teaching. So the first one here is the My First Piano Book from Piano Adventures. This would be the series that I would use next. And this is the theory version of it, Piano Adventures uh, Primer, but I would use a lesson book for my beginner students is I use um, the Mark Sarnicky books, which you can also get from Amazon as well. If I have an older beginner, there is this Piano Adventures for the older beginner that I really love to use in combination, once again, with the Mark Sarnicky books. Then I start to transition them into Royal Conservatory. And you can order their books also online. They do have a store, which is really fantastic. This is the level one books, and there is a repertoire book, and there's an etude book, so study book. And then they also as well have a theory book, and those ones are really good, and I use them as well there. And then I also really love to use this four star book, which I will talk about a little bit later on how to use four star for ear training um, online. Speaking about theory for uh, music lesson, one of the great things that you can do is that if your student already has a theory book, they can just work through it and they can, you can get them to take a picture of their lesson and email it to you and it's a really great way to mark it. Now, if you don't already have a theory book and none of the books that I've already shown you are an interest to you, you can potentially go and look at purchasing some different resources from TeachersPayTeachers.com. After going to TeachersPayTeachers.com, you can go and you can look up different um, music theory resources and there's all sorts of different ones here if you're looking for something a bit more independent base I'll just put it out there I'm not saying that you have to like get my stuff but if you put in my name Linnea Amstey and you look me up as a seller I have a number of wonderful different worksheets here. So we have um, here piano note names. For instance here we've got 
a worksheet on piano note names, an opportunity for you to work with your young kids on what their notes are. So they can write in the different letters and they could color in all their Ds, maybe they color on all their D notes in blue or whatever their favorite color is. And then there's all sorts of other ones, other worksheets as well. A worksheet for working through kids learning their right hand, their right hand, and their left hand. I did it opposite. This is my right hand, this is my left hand, but it might look opposite the camera, I'm not sure. But um, working on that and helping them to identify and color in their hands uh, different colors and work on their finger number. A worksheet to, for students to work on their triple clef notes and their bass clef notes, work on their accidentals, um, working on semitones, whole tones, and harmonic equivalents, rhythm, ledger lines, all sorts of different um, things in here. One of the things that can be a bit of a challenge is trying to make sure that your students still have a well-rounded experience that they're getting ear training. A really great book for that is this, Four Star uh, by Royal Conservatory of Canada. Here at the very back, if you turn to the very back page on the book, they will actually have a code that you can enter in. And when you enter in the code, you get an online ear training. Um, access to online ear training. So they can work through all the different assignments in this book and then you can also do some ear things in the actual lesson. So to actually sign up for it, you're going to go to rc, uh, rc.com and it has the um, websites there. It's different if you're in Canada or you're in the US. They've got a different website up there but the website is located just at the top of the page and so then you go into the website you're going to log in and just excuse me when I um, right here I'm already logged in right here if you sign up for RCM there then what you can do is you just redeem the code and then in here you're going to just redeem your little four star code right in here so it's a really great tool to try to make sure that you still have that skill being tested and worked on. One of the things that I've also found in music lessons, it is helpful to have a few manipulatives if you're doing lessons online. I've got a couple here. It's not anything complicated. It's really, really simple. One is I just went under Google, you know, in images and searched up piano keys and I found some piano keys and I printed it off <laughs> on a sheet of paper and I attached it to this file folder. The reason why I found this really helpful is that if I have a young student and they are having a hard time finding their note, I find this is quite helpful. I'll take it and I'll hold it out and I'll be able to show exactly where their hand's position is supposed to be. Because sometimes with the young kids, they can set up their hand, you know, just fine at the beginning. And then, you know, their hands get all wiggly or whatever and they wiggle right off. And then all of a sudden they got their thumb on B instead of their thumb on C. And you're like, no, it sounds bad because you're on the right hand position and you're trying to show it. So this is a really helpful tool I have found. Another thing is to have a whiteboard and you can just write different notes and that's really helpful because if there is something that I'm having a hard time being able to explain to the student I can scribble it out I can hold it up to the screen and it can really help to explain things when I really need to draw things and words are hard to communicate sometimes having something that I can draw and hold out in front of everybody else is really helpful I also find with my young students it is also quite helpful with the really, really young ones if you have your parent actually in the lesson. I hope you really enjoyed today's lesson on learning to teach music online through the quarantine. If you have any additional questions, I really encourage you to make some comments down below and I'll see if I can do any additional follow-ups as well as if you're interested on hearing a little bit more about recording little samples of things that you might need for your lesson in case you're worried about there being a little bit of a delay issue I can talk to you a little bit more about that so let me know if that's something that interests you I hope to hear back from you if you love this thumbs up and subscribe and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Stay healthy and stay safe.